We're standing now on uh, Jones Street, uh, which is in many ways the quintessential uh, Savannah thoroughfare or street. Some, some people believe, and I'm inclined to agree with them, it's the most beautiful uh, street uh, uh, in America. It is absolutely gorgeous, uh, and it is f full on both sides, almost from end to end, with original antebellum structures. Uh, in 1860, this was somewhat of a suburb. It was just growing, and these trees we see here were really just being planted. Uh, but uh, it had a very interesting and eclectic uh, mix of diplomats living here, doctors, grocers, uh, uh, people who made clothes and sold clothes and ran tin shops, and it was a very interesting, very interesting mix of people. Uh, there are stories associated with each of these buildings, but uh, these here in, uh, that I'm standing in front of have a particularly interesting story vis-a-vis -vis the war. There was a young officer, Joe Thompson, who commanded uh, uh, more or less uh, an enlarged battery, uh, artillery battery, and uh, he had been involved in a lot of fighting throughout the war and was involved heavily in the defense of Savannah. He took part in the evacuation of Savannah. Uh, and, of course, then the Army uh, withdrew into South Carolina and uh, ended up uh, moving more or less between Charleston and Augusta. And there was a lot of fighting along the way, but particularly fierce fighting at Skitalki. Uh And as the Federals pushed across the river, the, uh, the Confederates were very well dug in and the fighting was extremely bloody. Uh, in the course of this fighting, uh, Thompson, is commanding his battery, gets hit. Uh, it really suffers a terrible wound to the face and jaw. Uh, and it happens at a time when the Federals are, are pushing across the river and the uh, Confederate line is having to withdraw. Uh, so his friends look at him uh, and uh, uh, determine that he's dead. Uh, and uh, they, they leave him behind, and they, which wouldn't normally have happened except when you're being pressed that hard and you have somebody that's dead and you've got to look after the wounded. And so they pull back. Uh, and, and, you know, the war was winding up. It wasn't that many months later the war was over. And w one of the soldiers that was involved in that battle and had been a member, presumably, of the battery, uh, or, or knew Captain Thompson, said, um, uh, came back to town and was going to visit Thompson's father. They called the old colonel. Uh, he was one of the founders or proprietors of the Savannah Daily Morning News. And he was in town and he ran into an old army buddy um, um, DeWitt Bruin, who was the, a, very, a very successful architect. He designed the Keogh House here in Savannah, which still stands. It's a beautiful building. And so he ran into uh, Bruin and he says, I'm going to see old Colonel Thompson, but I'm dreading it because he's going to ask me about his son and I'm going to have to, I don't really want to describe, you know, what happened to him. And I, I feel very badly that he, we had to leave him on the field and I'm just dreading it. And so uh, Bruin says to him, uh, well, before you see the colonel, I want you to come with me. I want you to meet somebody. And they come around here up Jones Street and uh, up into this building and they knock on the door. And who answers the door but the woman who had been the fiance of Joe Brown. Uh, uh, and next behind her stood Joe Brown, clearly uh, badly shot up. Uh, disfigured, uh, and, uh, but apparently he, the Federals had picked him up off the field. He wasn't dead. They had taken him back to a hospital. He had recovered. He came back to Savannah. He married his fiance, and they lived here. And this soldier, who really was sort of just back being paroled, hadn't heard the story until he ran into Bruin. And he said, I don't know what I'm going to say to his father. And Bruin says, well, come on, I want you to meet somebody first.